cão. Good morning. Hello, good morning, Sister Kathy. Welcome. Good morning. It is Tuesday and it is a blessing to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sister Darrett. Welcome, welcome, welcome. May the Lord do a new thing for you in this season. Glory to God. I'm just thankful that I'm here and I didn't need any help to get out of bed this morning. It means that I am blessed. If you didn't need any help this morning to get yourself together, it's a blessing. Amen? Let us just thank God. Let us thank Him. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. We adore you. We give you all the honor, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. It is well. Thank you, Jesus. It is well. Hallelujah. Father, we come. It is day number five of the fasting. And we just want to ask you, Lord God, to forgive us our trespasses and let your will be done in our life for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Even now, I cover this broadcast. I cover your people. And I cover myself in the blood of Jesus Christ. Use me as your vessel, O God. And speak through me as you speak to me. I put my flesh under subjection right now. So your spirit that you have placed in me can manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Claudette, Sister Audrey, Brian. Welcome. Minister Angela. Good morning. Sister Claudia. Welcome. Sister Nela. Welcome. I encourage you to share this message. It is day number five of our fasting hallelujah god has been faithful amen i'm just thankful to god to be here amen welcome sister kadian good morning minister julian hallelujah god god never make a mistake remember that god don't lie God don't lie. He's not a liar. <laughs> he is not a liar. 
Amen. Mm -mm. God don't lie. He never lie. He never fail me. I'm, I'm sitting in this chair this morning and I'm asking for prayers. I'm nervous. I, I'm literally nervous. It, it's, it's not nervous of fear of something that's going to happen to me. I am shaking on my inside because of what the Lord has placed in my spirit. So, hallelujah. So, I ask this morning, cover me. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, welcome, welcome. Sister Kathy, may the Lord continue to use you. I ask for prayer based on what the Lord has placed in my spirit. So, while I'm here, just, just cover me. Just cover me. Amen. It is day five. Hallelujah. It is day number five. And God is serious. God, God is a serious God. He don't make no mistakes. He don't shuffle. God don't flinch. God don't wink. Mm -mm. None of those things don't happen when it comes to God. I'm not saying you should pray for me when I'm not here. Right now, as we are here on this platform, I'm asking you to pray my strength. Just cover me while I'm bringing the word. It's imperative. Welcome, Sister Donna Black, Sister Beverly Peters. Good morning. Minister Wilfred, welcome. I encourage every one of you here to share this message on your platform not just only in messenger but share it on your page that someone can go to your page and see it amen now i was reading an article this morning in the news in google not social media the news it was a man his last name is S-H-Y-N-E. He's from Belize. And he was talking about how he went to prison in America. How he was deported. But I encourage your people of God. We all have our reservations of people when they break the law. And do bad things. I don't do politics. I don't speak politics. Welcome, Sister Valden, Sister Sasha. Good morning. I don't do politics. I don't speak politics. I don't know any politician. And I, I don't know any celebrity. I don't follow them. I don't know their family or anything I'm just a nobody that God has called to do his work and I speak with no apologies I release the raw undiluted word based on what the Lord placed in my spirit amen I was reading this man article and he said there is a documentary about his life and he came to America and he was living with his mother in New York City and he ran into a few people and things didn't go well with him and he was deported and sent home so now the person that is he's saying that this is the person that um, have people testify against him that he so he went to prison amen this is why I said, cover me. Cover me. If you never cover me before, cover me today. Amen. And so I, I read the story and I believed the man. 
And the Holy Spirit showed me that the man is telling the truth. I don't do politics. I'm gonna I keep reusing this because this have a lot to do with politics. I read I read the story, I believe God said he's, he's speaking the truth. But but after I got off the thing and I was getting ready to leave my house to come here. <laughs> The Lord began to speak to me. And I got scared. Because when God speak. God is not going to change his mind. Hello. God began to speak to me. And so this thing is in my spirit. And it's troubling me. I'm encouraging you to share this broadcast. People of God. I am not disobedient and I will never go against what the Lord said. But this one, this one, here in the book of Ezekiel chapter 39, I'm going to tell what the Lord said, but I'm going to read the word of God first. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 39, and I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Son of man, prophesy against Gog. Give him this message for the sovereign Lord, I am your enemy, O Gog, ruler of the nations of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn you around and drive you toward the mountains of Israel, bringing you from distant north. I will knock the bow from your left hand and the arrow from your right hand, and I will leave you helpless. You and your army and your allies will all die on the mountains. I will feed you to the vultures, wild animals. You will fall in the open fields, for I have spoken, says the Lord, says the sovereign God. I will rain fire on Magog and... Yes, I will rain fire... <laughs> On Magog and all your allies who live safely on the coast. Then they will know that I am the Lord. In this way I will make known my holy name among my people of Israel. I will not let anyone bring shame on it. And the nations too will know I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. That day of judgment will come, says the Sovereign Lord. Everything will happen just as I have declared it. So when God speak, he don't shuffle. Somebody go ahead and share. Good morning, Sister Darrett. Welcome. People of God, listen to me. In my belly, I feel the nerves. Because of what the Lord dropped in my spirit. You see, sometimes we have our own reservation of things. And we watch the news and we hear what people say. And uh, we, we, we come up with our own analogy of how the law should operate. But God is a forgiving God. I want to say this one more time. God is a forgiving God. What the Lord placed in my spirit this morning. I'm struggling with it. Because what the Lord has placed in my spirit. The Lord said. There's a man that is in jail. I don't know if this man is, is charged yet. I don't know. There are many charges against him that. A lot of people have evidence and when people have evidence of what they say you do that means that there is more truth to the story right so i don't have a problem with anything that's happening because i really don't it's not my concern but when god begin to speak then it concerns me because something is happening in the realms of this spirit that god is saying i have to get glory out of this one of the things that the Lord revealed to me that they might kill this man in jail. The man is in jail currently as we speak. The man is in jail. 
and if they kill him, it's to silence him. Hey, Baba Baboko Saya. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let me let me open one of these things to cover my head. The Holy Spirit is saying the man know a lot and politicians are involved i don't get to the sweet part yet because look i don't go back and forth with people and therefore god know who to 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 give me word to give because number one when i was living in the world i didn't take no talk from nobody I don't argue with people. I don't waste my money or my time on foolishness and small talk. So people are going to talk regardless. But when God speak, it done, it final. Amen? Hallelujah. So, this is not a war. And this is not a competition. The work of God is not a competition and it's not a contest. This is what the sovereign God said to me today. He said to me, there's a possibility that they will kill this man in jail. Because the man knows too much. Again, when the Lord revealed this to me, I'm like, what does this have to do with me? I'm already in jail. The Holy Spirit began to minister to me and he said, we have to pray for this man. No. I don't have nothing to do with these people. Number one, it has nothing to do with my job in the kingdom of God. Personally. But when God get involved and begin to tell me this, I'm not lying. I started to get nervous. I'm like, how am I going to say this? The Lord said, come out of your house. I'm like, come out of my house. He said, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have an appointment for 8 o'clock tomorrow. But this morning, I got up thinking that it was today. And I know it's the Holy Spirit because I got up and I got dressed. And I called them people and they said it's tomorrow. And I sat there and then that's when I started to read the news. The news people of God. Not Facebook. Not Instagram. The news. And when I read the news and I close the phone, that's when God begins to speak to me. You see, let me tell you something. God is in everything. You hear me? God said to me, we have to pray. I'm like, what do you mean pray? How can you pray for somebody so messy? Somebody who tell lie on God. Because that was my first question, God. But the man tell life on you. I said, you tell him to do something. God said, that's none of your business. God said, we have to pray for Sean Coons. That's his legal government name. No. In this time. In my fasting, in our fasting that we are doing, no added sugar is in this fasting. Blood sugar drop. Blood sugar drop even lower. When the Lord begin to say this to me, I said, God, I'm confused. He said, this has nothing to do with El Shaddai. 
this have nothing to do with you this is my business he said i have to get glory out of what's happening there people of god if you know me well you know how, how this works the way god used me and i said god How am I going to pray for someone that the world condemn? I said, oh, Lord, how am I going to pray? For somebody that the world condemned. And God began to minister to me and said, He have to get glory out of that man that is in jail. Who am I to judge? I don't concern myself with this is why I don't even want to mention the person's name at all. Because it is out of the hands of man. God said, this man knows a lot. And there is glory in him for God. No. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Jesus. I leave my house thinking I'm going to go to that place that I went last week to preach from the parking lot. I look at the time. I said, God. I'm going to go on and, and when I get to the, the light to make that left the Holy Spirit to take the highway and go to the church. Remember now, this has nothing to do with the ministry. This is nothing to do with what we are saying. This has nothing but the Lord God himself has spoken and here I am out of obedience. People of God, cover me. Pray my strength. And when, when the Lord said that, he said, there is more. So God is not done yet. There is more. There is more. Share this message. I'm not, I'm not sending a message to anyone. Because God didn't tell me to send out a word to somebody out there what he said to me that we have to pray for the man pray for the man because glory is gonna come out of the man to god hallelujah somebody just know that even if you are the chief of sinners you can repent when I open Facebook and Instagram get ready to go live I hear the Lord said to me who was beside Jesus when he was on the cross Hallelujah. So we pray against the backlash that will come. It's not our concern. The fate of how anything will go in this life. No. What we need to focus on is that whatever we do, God get glory out of it. Wherever we go, God is in it. Hallelujah. I and I, I I feel I, I you know I, I have so much mixed emotions, but it's none of my business. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? 
when I look, even the very people that are part of the ministry speak against El Shaddai. You are a part of the ministry and yet you're speaking against, when you speak against the people in the ministry, you're speaking against your church brethren and church, yes. So you're speaking against the ministry because the people came together to build, to establish what God said, what God showed in a vision. So you cannot receive any blessing from a place that you're cursing. I'm here. There is no sugar coat to, to fix the word that God give me. But based on how I, my personal feelings, I have to put that aside and come clean and tell you what the Lord said. We have to pray for the man. It's not about what he did or what he didn't do. But there is something in the man that will glorify God. But God is a jealous God. So he will use the foolish things to confuse us because we consider ourselves that we are not fools. So it's foolishness right here. God is doing. But it's for him to get glory. Because somebody will say. What kind of foolishness this, this woman attack? It sounds like foolishness. Yes. It sounds like foolishness. But it is what God said. Many times. This is the thing that happens to us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is not lying. God is not making any mistakes. The feeling that's in my belly. Something is about to happen. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever the situation is. I'm here out of obedience. I cover your son. If you are saying that I should pray for him. It means that he belongs to you. Whether he's going to repent today, tonight, tomorrow, I don't know. But we pray out of obedience. And we ask God to do what he said he's going to do. We ask God to take the glory out of the man's life. We ask God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That the will of God will be done to the glory of God. That whatever God said, it will come to pass. Jesus. Hallelujah. It is well. It is well. My God. I pray right now and I speak with no apologies. I owe no one any explanation. The world is already corrupt. Hallelujah. The world is already corrupt and we know, we know. We know the world is corrupt, but God don't lie. And God is jealous. He don't share his glory with no man. And so if God said we have to pray for the man, let us pray for the man. Let us find it in our heart to forgive him. Yes, based on what we heard and the many people that showed up with their evidence. God have something to do with all of this. And he said we should pray for him. So let us find it in our heart. The things that we heard and the things that we see. And the things that yes we believe. Let us let it go and forgive. Let us forgive. 
You see, God don't step in when we have it all together. God only step in when we don't have it all together. When we don't know what to do. When we don't know where to go. That's when God show up. God don't enter. God don't enter a space when we have it together. We don't need God when everything is going good. This is how human being is wired. When we don't have problems, we don't have to pray. But today, it doesn't matter where you are, what space you are in. The Holy Spirit is saying, pray for the man. We have to forgive. Let us forgive him. Let God deal with it. It's at a place right now where only God make all the decisions. God is in control. It doesn't matter how we felt in the past. Yeah, I don't know about you. Because this is something that to me it's despicable. But who am I to judge? The Lord is our defender. And he's not only defending the righteous right now. Jesus, my God, my God, this is painful. Good morning and welcome, Minister Michelle. It pains me when the Lord said this. I'm like, hey! How could that be? But he is God. From the beginning to the end, he is God. Who are we to judge anybody's son? Who are we to judge anyone? We already judge. We already become jury. We already pass judgment. We already sentence him to death. But guess what? God have a different plan. God have a different plan. And it cannot be reversed. So no, something is about to happen. America is about to... You see, I remember last couple of days, God gave me this message that America is about... The, the deck is about to be shuffled. Some things are about to happen. And it all boiled down to politics. So let us as a believer back out of politics. Let us come out of believers. Let us come out of politics. Leave politics alone and focus on the things of God. If God said, regardless of what that man did, we have to forgive him. You cannot pray for somebody unless you forgive them. You cannot pray for anyone unless you forgive them. It doesn't matter. The man never hurt me. I'm serious. We are all guilty. God is doing something in this season. And it's time for us to let things go. It's not our place to get into God's business. If God said we should pray for the man, regardless, irrespective of what the man did, we know a lot of things have been involved, corruption and everything. But if God said we have to pray, it means that there's a place that is taking El Shaddai. If God said we have to forgive somebody who is in prison for multiple things that we can't talk about on, 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 on this platform. We have to forgive does it make me feel good? I'm not going to be like Jonah. He gave me the word today and I'm releasing it today. When Jonah received the word of God to go and speak, minister to Nineveh, Jonah, this, jo Jonah backslide. 
He refused. He said, I'm not doing it. I'd rather leave the presence of God. So when he was running away from the presence of God, you see, God said, Nineveh is a blessed place. It's a great place. So here we are this morning to pray. And I encourage, I know this is not what you want to hear today on day five of your fasting. But this is what the Lord said. We have to pray for the man. He's in jail. It took many years of detective work for him to be in jail. But God said he have to get glory out of the situation. So sisters and brothers in Christ, I beseech you by the mercies of God to leave people business alone and let us pray and forgive this man. God will deal with him. God, God have it. It's in God's hands. Let us drop it. Let us forget about it. It does not concern us. God is saying, I have glory coming out of it. So if God have glory coming out of it, who are we to continue to hold it? Let us forgive and let us move on. Thus saith the Lord. He will get glory out of it. And we have to pray. Amen. And I rest my case. Find it in your heart to pray for the man. I know many of you are surprised. But who are we to judge? His name is Sean Coombs. If you know me personally, maybe I was the first one who cut him off. Remember, you cannot pray for someone unless you forgive them. So if you know in your heart that you don't forgive, don't pray. You have to forgive in order to pray. You have to let things go in order. This is not a personal issue. I'm not getting paid. It is hurting my belly. But I have to do it because that's what God said. So the reason why it hurt my belly, because I have to forgive him. Did it hurt me? No. Many of us, this is the thing that God wants from us. It's time to let some things go. Come out of politics. As a believer, we shouldn't be getting involved into the things that will bring us down, that will destroy our ministry, that will destroy our walk with God. Because this thing is politics. And God is not making any mistake in this season. God don't lie. So Father, we come to you one more time. And we pray, oh God, for that man, whatever it is, we pray, oh God, that you take the glory out of that mess. His life is a mess. It's been a mess for a long time. But God, we pray that he will repent, Jesus. We pray that he will repent and begin to seek you and seek your face and stay in your presence. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Heavenly Father, we put him before you right now. And we ask you this. Draw nigh unto him, O God, as he opened his heart to you. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. find it in our heart to forgive people when they do wrong. Many times 
people didn't hurt you, but because somebody recruit you to hate them, and you hate them and you don't know them. You don't know what God placed in them. Maybe these things had to happen for some people to begin to believe in God. Sometimes, I, like I said, many years ago, I got in trouble in Florida. And that's when I really cry out to God. And I asked him, I said, Lord, if you take me out of this situation, I will serve you. I didn't come here to talk about me. You know, I just want to give God all the glory right now because he's a good God. And to speak the truth, to really speak the truth, I feel some peace. I feel comfort right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The work of God is not easy. People of God, when you speak to you, be obedient. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be every time when God gives you a prophecy, it's going to sound good. Sometimes what God will place in your spirit is something that you wouldn't even want to talk about. But, we, you know, we have to pray for the spirit of boldness. Somebody said, I feel the presence of God in this place. Amen. I am free from that. It was a burden. I was carrying it. The Lord gave me the message after 7, around 7.30 this morning. And it's almost 10.30. And I thank God it's 10.30 on the nose three hours ago. But I had to release it from my spirit because I don't want to live with this because it makes me feel like I was getting sick. I don't know. I, I, I pray for the same grace to be upon every member of this ministry. That's my prayer. And I pray for the people that God has called to lead in this ministry. I pray for those that he already chose and the ones that are coming that will lead in El Shaddai. I pray that they will be obedient to God because disobedience, the Bible said disobedience is worse than witchcraft. So I pray that those that God is calling into this ministry to lead, they will lead without favoritism. They will lead without without fear. They, they will lead without prejudice. You see, God... God, God, God is colorless. Why you know God is colorless? Because he created all of us and we are of different colors. So he's colorless. God don't have no color. He's a spirit. Hello? You cannot tell what color the spirit has. I'm not talking about the physical appearance of what Jesus looked like when he was on earth. Because he was not a handsome man. Do you think it make me excited to, 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 to come and say something that I used to speak against? I had to repent. And that it mean. It mean that I have to. Let me tell you something, people of God. God is God not easy. And if when God ready to bless you, he will give you assignment or he will, he will give you some task that you have to be obedient to do because your blessing is tied up into it. If you're disobedient to God, there is no blessing for you because he cannot trust you. Can God trust you? Can God trust you? Mighty God. Can God trust you? Can he trust you? Can God trust you? I have to lead without fear or favor. Can God trust you? Somebody say I had to repent. You have to repent in order, in order to pray for somebody you speak against. You have to repent. Or else you're a liar. If you pray today here with us, 
and you did not repent. You have to repent and go back and go pray. Because if you don't repent, you cannot pray for that man. Because every one of us says something about the man. And we don't know him. He did some things. He broke the law. Some ungodly stuff took place. But who are we when God said pray for him? It means that we have to repent first. If you really want to go somewhere in the kingdom of God. Repentance. You have to wear it like a garment. Forgiveness. You have to wear it like a garment. If you don't repent, you cannot pray for that man. Because each and every one of us here, in our heart, we said something about the man. That was not of God. As a believer, you see, God is serious and very intentional about this ministry. I have to ask God for forgiveness. That's why my belly was curled every 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 inch of my intestine was 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 shrinking i know i might have lost some weight today because of this particular message so i'm here to tell you as of this day forward good morning my brother let us back out of some things that does not concern us and that does not concern god yes we have to we have to we have to. We, we, we have to repent in order to pray for people. Especially people that we say things about. And if God said it, then so shall it be. We are not going to negotiate it. We are not going to go back on our word. Our word is our bond. I was sick to my stomach. No lie. I was sick to my stomach. And this is when you know that you are serving God. This is when you know because they are as a believer, yes, when when sin is sin and the law is the law. But God said otherwise. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to feed into it. You see. The Bible said. God have the final word. If you know how I feel right now. I feel like a bird. I feel free. And now I understand what Jeremiah went through. Now I understand what Isaiah went through. Now I understand what the minor and the major prophets of the Bible went through. Because in order for you to be obedient to God, you have to first love men on this earth. Even when they are living their life opposing to the word of God. We have to love them. We have to look at them that yes, they are God's people too. Hello, somebody. So it's not about how we feel. Our personal feelings does not matter to God because if our personal feelings matter to God, then he would not tell us to repent. And pray for murderer. He would not tell us to repent. Remember there was a. There were two thieves hanging next to Jesus Christ. And that's what the Holy Spirit reminded me. When I was about to turn on the computer. That's what the Lord reminded me. Who was beside Jesus Christ? It don't get no better than this. But we just want to thank God. Whatever it takes for you to live a clean life, do it. There are some assignments that God will not give you if you're not right. 
There are so hey, <laughs> there are some assignment that you will never receive from God if you are not living the life that He has for you. Every one of us have a different life to live for the Lord. Every one of us assignment is different. I don't know. Maybe God, maybe God gave somebody else the same things to do that He gave me to do today, and they didn't do it. And so, maybe somebody else will come up and say, God, tell them to do the same thing. So, you see, it's a season where God wants us to be clean. It's a season where God wants us to live right. It's a season where God is saying, I'm taking you through some fire. And I'm going to see if you're going to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is doing a new thing. And we don't want to fail God. I'd rather to fail man. Than to fail God. I'd rather to fail my children. Than to fail God. I'd rather to fail everybody who love me. Than to fail God. I won't fail God. Because he created me. And I am on my way to heaven. People of God, listen to me. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. Whether you know me personally or not, I'm here to tell you today. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Hell is a place. And heaven is a place. And they have their appointments. It's time for us to begin to love. You said you felt a release and a yes, that's how I was feeling. And the Lord said there is more. It means that God is about to give us some assignment and it's going to be difficult, but we can do it. It's just the beginning of difficult matters. God is serious about this ministry. And if you're a part of this ministry... You have to do things right. There is no shame in what God is saying in this time. So you see, the mouth, the tongue, is a weapon. Powerful. Powerful. So the same tongue that condemns a person was the same tongue that had to go and repent and pray for the person's soul. We're not praying for the physical man, you know. We're praying for the soul. We're praying for his soul. I want you to understand. You see, in the book of Matthew, the word of God said, whatever we bound on earth, it's already bound in heaven. So we are here praying. But it's already done in heaven. This was just out of obedience to God. Whatever we lose on earth, it's already loose in heaven. So heaven is already on the case. This is a case that is in court in heaven. We were talking about that in church on Sunday. This is a situation that is in front of God. And when God speak, it's final because he is the high priest. He is the high court judge. Jesus Christ is the high court judge. Hallelujah. 
somebody is here today on this platform and uh, you are struggling with your weight but it's become a medical issue let me see if i can say it one more time someone here is on this platform you're watching you have a problem with your weight your body weight and the thing is medical it's like you're gaining weight and it's not eat from eating food your weight that you're gaining is it's medical there is something going on in your body today I pray that it will regulate Jesus today I pray that it will regulate it will stop it will stop right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth the thing that is happening in your body you're not gaining weight because of what you eat or how you eat you're gaining the weight because it's a condition that you have developed so today I pray glory to God that this thing will stop it will come back to normal in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth amen hallelujah God, God cannot be mocked God cannot be mocked no one can play with God and get away no because God is everywhere he is everywhere hallelujah so no one can fool around and think that God don't see them or the things that they are doing I remember many years ago somebody said I can just go ahead and do what I want to do and nobody don't know and my response was how do you think what make you think nobody won't know God is you see when people don't know the Word of God they don't know they don't understand the power that God has his power goes beyond the natural imagination of man. No book cannot tell you about the power of God. Because he is omnipresent, the omniscient, the omnipotent. He's everywhere at the same time doing what he wants to do. He's here and he's somewhere else. And he's, uh, yes, he's healing some people right now. He's opening doors to others right now. Hallelujah. He is loosing some people's tongues right now because some people, their tongues need to be loose. So to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord intervene in your case right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Minister Wilfred, I pray that the Lord intervene in your case right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Minister Debari Kosuto, Minister Julene Sewell, I pray that the Lord will intervene in your case right now. My God, my God, my God. Ayandara Baba Kosata, Rabadi Korobo Kosoto Koshakataya. My God, Sister Kathy, I pray my, that the things that you desire of God, that it will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree and I declare it. I have seen Bailey, Minister I have seen Bailey. I hear the Lord said, a spouse, a spouse. He have a spouse for you. He said he have a spouse for you. You know many times because things don't happen on our clock, on our watch, we lose faith. But I pray right now that the Lord will honor your request. Those 26 sons that you are lifting in prayer. God is about to lift them higher. 
from the youngest to the oldest. I pray. Sister Naila, I pray that you will have a powerful testimony. It's coming. It is coming. That is my prayer for you. Hallelujah. <sighs> you see, Debbie Eversley, I hear the Lord, the Lord dropped something in my ears, right here, in this right ear. The Lord said, I will grant it. I don't know if you have a prayer request or I don't know if you have something written down on paper with that word grant. G-R-A-N-T. Grant. 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 Great. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Pauline Campbell Gordon, Minister Pauline Campbell Gordon, I pray your strength. I pray your strength. And I pray that as you study the Word of God, because you're going to have to start studying, not just read the Bible, but study it. As you study the word of God, the Lord will reveal himself to you and give you answers to your questions. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. My brother Roberto Salmon, God bless you. I pray for your peace. Hallelujah. The Lord will settle that thing. Roberto, that thing that you are worried about, God is going to give you peace with it. I pray that he will settle it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, oh God have mercy, Sister Ivan Blake. The Lord said, try again. Whatever that is. The Lord said, try again. Trust him and try again. Sister Ivan Blake, the Lord said, trust him and try again. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is well. Sister Claudette, I pray for your husband. Sister Claudette Thompson, I pray for your husband right now, for his health. I pray for healing for your husband in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray divine healing in your husband right now. Hallelujah. I, I pray divine healing in your husband right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes, I pray for your husband. God see him. It will be well. It will be well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It will be well. Hallelujah. Um, Petrona Bailey out there in New York City. The Lord said you need to do something new. He said, do something new. There is something that God wants you to do that you have never done before with your life. Hallelujah. 
Hey, Jesus. There is something that the Lord wants you to do. He said, do something new. I, I don't know the story. I don't know the situation. But what he is saying, do something new. Amen. Glory to God. You see, there are some things that many times God speak to us, but we um we dismiss it because we don't understand. Amen. We dismiss some things that God tell us to do, but we really don't understand. Because if we understand we would yield to it. Amen. If we really understand, we will yield to it. Glory to God. Disobedience, the Bible said, disobedience is worse than witchcraft. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is well. You know, we just have to thank God. Many one of the things I see, we get so comfortable and become complacent. Our expectations are the same. When you pray, believe that God will answer you. Don't wait for anyone to pray for you. Seek God's face. God will choose the people that he wants to pray for you. Don't go looking for anybody to pray for you. Go to him in prayer. I want to share something that happened. I think it was Saturday night. Last week, Saturday night. Last week, Saturday night, I was listening to the radio. Yeah. And when I was, while I was listening to the radio, and they were about to close the program on the radio, the, the pastor that was praying, he said, he prayed, and when he almost finished, he said, and God, I ask you that, that um, he mentioned the name of a radio station in New York. He said, that underground radio station in New York that is intercepting the signal of the radio station here, in Connecticut he is asking God to stop it and I said God why would he mention that and God said to me you have to be intentional you have to be specific the the, the, the pastor was praying that the radio station that's in New York that is intercepting signals I'm telling the people of God intercepting signal in Connecticut he was asking God to stop them so today we pray today we pray that anything that will intercept what God is doing in this ministry we stop it if it's a man, if it's a woman, and if you know they mentioned your name to God, the man mentioned the name of the radio station. And when I said, Lord, what is this? God said, yes, you have to be intentional. You have to be specific. You got to be specific. And this is serious. Hallelujah. Hello? He mentioned some things and he was calling some names. I'm listening to the radio. This is on the radio. So you see, this means that we need to be specific when we go to God. Hmm. 
Sister Kathy Williams, we need to be specific when we go to God. Chev, excuse me. Chev, we need to be, I'm going to eat up. We need to be specific. Sister Valdine, you need to be specific when you go to God. Sister Tessa Palmer, Sister Nela, you need to be specific when you go to the Lord in prayer. Yes. Sister Derek Jackson, when you go to the Lord in prayer, Minister Wilfred, when you go to God, you need to be specific. If you have to call name, call name to God because God is listening. He said, my ears is not deaf. And my hands are not short. So when you go to the Lord in prayer, be specific. Mention your children's name before God. Call the... Call their name before God. Yes, the, the, this was a radio program that I'm listening to. Y yes, I still read the news. And yes, I still listen to the radio. When you go to God, don't pray any random prayer. Go to him. Sister Shanique, when you go to God, don't pray a random prayer. Sister Debbie, go straight to the point. When you go to the Lord in prayer, be straightforward. This is one of the main reasons why we don't get results because we are not straightforward. We are firing blank shots all over the we are all over the place. Mm -hmm. We are all over the place. And God wants us to be specific. He wants us to come to him, Minister Wilfred. With whatever is on our heart. He already knows what's on our heart. So when we go to God and we are not being. We are, many times we don't even know how to pray. Hello. Hello. We need to be straightforward. Yes. There are some things that God bless us. Because we went straight to him. And one of the things that we all need to pray for is for a hedge. Good morning, my sister. We, we, we need to pray for that hedge of protection. It came out in Sunday sermon. We need to pray for that hedge of protection around our life and the life of our children and around the ministry. Remember, the Bible said that's what the devil used and remind God. Why did you give Job a hedge of protection when Job, when Job was materialistic? So it was, not, it was not what Job had materially that the devil wanted. It was the hedge of protection. Certain level of protection that he didn't pray for, that he didn't go into prayer and fasting for. As you are in prayer and fasting, I encourage you to go and ask God for a hedge of protection. Hallelujah. My God. Yes. People of God, listen. And listen good. Listen and listen good. Listen and listen. Pay attention. Amen? You got to be intentional. You have 
to be intentional. When you go to the Lord in prayer, there is no other time. Yes, there is no other time greater than when you're in fasting. Amen. There is no other time. You see, there was some things happening in the Bible. A man had a son that was sick in the book of Mark. And the man didn't have any faith. He was a, he didn't believe. And he was following the disciples everywhere they go, following Jesus, nagging these people to pray for him and his son. But his son was a little boy that had epilepsy. I'm here to let you know, people of God, pay attention. Amen. The man went to Jesus and he said, Jesus, can you do this for me? Jesus said, what do you mean if I can? Do you believe? And the man said, forgive my unbelief. But then, something happened. After the child was delivered from that spirit, The man turned to Jesus and he said, So I went to your disciples and they couldn't deliver my son. He was ready to speak against the other leaders that were following Jesus. He was the problem. None of them didn't tell him that because he don't believe. They were there praying for him and his son. They were there praying for this man tirelessly. And the man wasn't a believer. He doubted God. He cried out. He said, Lord, forgive my unbelief. But then the disciples pulled Jesus aside and said, how could you do this? And we have been trying so hard and we couldn't do it. Jesus said, this is done through fasting and prayer. So when you're fasting, it's a whole different level. So I encourage you, pay attention when you're fasting. The kind of people that approach you, the kind of dreams you get, the things that the Lord will say to you, the kind of behavior some people have when they are around you there are something that will never happen until you go on fasting there are jesus open your eyes open your eyes certain things cannot take place unless you're fasting so during the fasting, I encourage you. Hallelujah. I encourage you to be on the lookout. Be on your double watch. Glory to God. Be on the lookout. Whatever you receive that God favor you and give to you. The devil will go back to God and remind him about it. And that's what the devil did to Job. He did not mention the amount of things that Job had. The devil was not concerned about the amount of animals. The amount of children that Job had. Those things did not concern Satan. It was the protection. The hedge that God built around him. Somebody said this is why the prayers couldn't connect. When you're praying with people that don't believe. You're going to have issue. 
you're wasting time. And this is why we have to pray for discernment. We have to pray for discernment. Well, you know, I usually tell people when they get certain dreams, don't talk about it, pray about it. Certain dreams, just pray. You don't even have to talk about it, just pray. Whatever God is doing in this time, it is well. I know many of you don't understand it, but this is very powerful. Whatever God is doing in this time, it is well. People of God, listen. The man began to criticize the disciples in the that was following Jesus, saying that they're no good, they don't know what they're doing, they're idiots, and all these things. Jesus looked at him. And when the disciples pulled Jesus aside, Jesus reminded them, you see, they were always eating. The disciples loved food. Yeah. <laughs> they were always eating. They were always asking Jesus, do you have food to feed these people? Hallelujah. Do you have food to feed these people? Minister Jelena can share that tonight when we get on the um, the Zoom. So for those of you that are joining us for the first time, welcome. Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. Welcome to El Shaddai. It is day five of our fasting. Amen. Glory to God. I encourage you to be on the lookout. God said there is more to come. It means that there are some things that's about to take place. Amen. So open your eyes and pay attention. Hallelujah. Now. I just want to say this. People of God, stay in the word. Stay in the presence of God. Don't be distracted. There is more to come, meaning that we have more assignment coming. Amen. Hallelujah. There is more to come in that we have assignment. Glory to God. Glory be to God. It is well. It is well. Amen. Hallelujah. There are some things that God is getting ready to do and it's not going to feel comfortable because he's taking you out of your comfort zone. He is. He is taking you out of your comfort. Sister Shelley, welcome. He is taking you out of your comfort zone. But God wants us to be obedient in this time so he can do what he's doing. We are comfortable. We become complacent. And this is why many people are getting discouraged because they, they are their mindset. Hallelujah. It's because of their mindset. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, my sisters and my brothers, we have two days to go for this fast then to end. Be on the lookout. Open your eyes. 
Make sure you check your surroundings. It will be well with you. It will be well with you. My time is up. I have to go. Amen. Stay blessed. And be blessed of the Lord. Remember. Be on the lookout. And for those of you who would like to join us on the Zoom, you can send a message to um, our messenger and we will share the link with you later. Glory to God. Once again, this has been Breakfast with Jesus. See you later on the Zoom where we're going to pray. Amen. It's our prayer marathon season. So many things are happening. So many premature death and accident. Things that are happening and the year is getting close. So we have to open our eyes and be on the lookout. God bless you all. See you all later on. Amen.